Hey there, Mission Control. Well, we're continuing our system overview series, and today I want to talk to you about wind power. See the really cool mass going up with the rotor at the top of it, generating all this wonderful wind power. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Just kidding, obviously you can't see it, it's not here. But where, why I'm standing here and what we're looking at is actually uh, the mount system for solar pan, or uh, for, excuse me, for wind. Solar panels are right there, here's the wind. Um, so uh, wind power, uh, great thing. Uh, get your total mass, you go up. I think it's a minimum of 30 feet. Uh, it depends on your area though. It really depends on your area. And uh, get it up there, get your wind turbines going spins a uh, magnetic coil around some uh, wire, generating electricity, uh, direct current, and then you need to convert that over to 120 or 12 volt if you're gonna keep it that way, uh, or however many volts it's producing, depending on the size of the system. And you gotta mount it. So what we have here is the actual mount unit. So let me talk to you about the mounts and we'll go over uh, why there isn't a mast here right now. So the total dimensions of this cube, it's all uh, concrete, sorry, I said cement earlier, I always do that. Uh, you guys keep correcting me. It is four feet by four feet by four feet. So you're just seeing the tip of the iceberg here. This thing goes way down into the ground. Uh, quite a bit of uh, concrete here to keep everything stable. It's totally over-engineered. Um, the reason I did this, and what these, this rebar here, it goes down and is all wired together uh, inside of there. Uh, is so that instead of having to run guide wires out quite a long ways, we can run the guide wires directly down and have them sink into a really solid material. And this will help it to where this thing takes up uh, less uh, surface area of the actual work site. And that's one of the challenges with uh, all the mass systems that I found uh, is that they have these guide wires that go out, you know, 100 feet from the base. Uh, just a real mess, a real eyesore. So. I'm hoping that uh, you can just roll these over, create your eyes, roll them over a few times, and uh, really work. And then I put in really oversized, uh, these are, I think they're one inch uh, uh, bolts. Put them at the hardware store, put them in there, sank them down quite a ways, let all the concrete cure around them. So uh, again, the idea here is that you would send your mast up, you, you bolt it there, and then you'd run your guide wires down uh, to these, uh, this rebar here when you fold it over. So that was the game plan for the install. Uh, behind me, here's the solar panels and their inverters. And my plan was to put another post up and run the wires for the solar panel, or for the wind, back here into an inverter and then connect it into the main system. The challenge I had when looking for uh, wind power generator, or excuse me, inverters, is they had to be grid tied because that's the system that we have. So that's a limiting factor of the overall design is you can't just throw up a windmill and a turbine, wind turbine, excuse me, and, and just be pulling your DC power off it unless you set up a, a battery bank uh, for that and a regulator. So uh, I chose not to do that. A major reason we chose not to do it is because of money. We, we just, we ran out of money and uh, there's other things that are higher priority than that wind power uh, right now, like getting the digester up and running. Uh, that's really the second source of power I really wanna have in place. Uh, besides solar panels. So uh, not being able to find an inverter and then the cost of all of it was a major challenge that basically uh, detracted, uh, scared me away, made me not want to. Uh, I couldn't do it even if I wanted to put the uh, wind turbine up, but the place is there and we're ready to put it in. So another reason uh, why I didn't want to put it in right at the moment we were building this thing two years ago when we first set up this site is because I started noticing that it seemed like there was a bunch of wind during the, the uh, summer. I mean, just really howling wind. We got a lot of it here where we live. Uh, we're at the, the back side of the Cascade Mountain Range on the east side, and we get some really good wind. And I was thinking, oh, this is you know, totally, to totally easy. You know, or, this is a no-brainer. Just, just put the wind in. But I started thinking about them, and then I, I paid attention during winter because we ran out of money, couldn't put it in. I was like, you know, I really need to put, what is it, an anemometer in uh, and, and actually keep track of the wind and make sure that we really do have enough. And when I was uh, reading online, a lot of people were like me at the time. They're like, of course I got plenty of wind. Ha ha ha, I know what I'm talking about. Um, and then they get it and they realize they don't. So we put the anemometer in and now we're just uh, waiting to record a whole year's worth of data and see, see what it does, see what it, see what it really looks like. And then that might, uh, persuade us one way or the other to put the wind in. 
Oh, it is still, it's 40 degrees out, but my goodness, 40 Fahrenheit. Uh, still a slight chill, but nothing like <laughs> what everyone is getting. I saw it today, uh, I forget the mountain name. It was in New York. It's not really a mountain, no offense guys, but we have mountains on the West Coast. You guys have hills. They had a 6,000 foot mountain hill. Uh, I mean, there's mole hills that are bigger than that over here. Uh, and anyway, 6,000 foot mountain, I think at the top of it with wind chill, it was negative 98, was it 98 or 68? Either way, really freaking cold, like stupid cold, retarded cold, just horribly, horribly cold. So this is nothing like that. Uh, anyway, I digress again. Here we go. So the last uh, thing that kind of is making me pause on wind power is sound and maintenance. So lots of maintenance on the uh, tower. So you got to set it up right so it can pivot down uh, and you can get to it easily because I am not climbing to the top of the tower. Uh, that's just not going to happen. That dog won't hunt and I ain't climbing. Not that high. That, that's not going to work for me. Not to mention I'd have to put in like a serious tower for me to get 200 pounds up there. Uh, whew. So uh, maybe you didn't notice, uh, if you're brand new, uh, you, you have no idea what this is gonna be for, but those who have been falling around, check it out, huh? New overalls. Yeah, these are Carhartt overalls. I got them for Christmas. Thank you, Sherry. They're awesome. They fit perfect. Uh, I'm excited to see if they're Martian tough because the last pair I got of Carhartts didn't last a year. So we'll see if these guys can. These ones are gonna not have to go through what the last ones went through, but so hopefully they do last. Otherwise, I'm gonna be going to the Duluth and uh, giving Carhartt a piece of my mind. I keep digressing. Anyway, sound. All right, so we talked about maintenance. You gotta maintain uh, a wind turbine because they move uh, and you're gonna have uh, maintenance that you need to take care of them. They're gonna break. Uh, so you gotta be able to do that. And then uh, the last one is just sound. Depending on what one you get, uh, you could introduce quite a bit of sound pollution in the area. And one of the things we enjoy about being here is it's quiet except for that van going right over there. But you can't hear that up at the house. But it is nice and quiet here. Uh, and when we put together the future HABs, HAB 2, HAB 3, HAB 4, and the ones that actually deploy, probably HAB 3 and 4 would be deployable. Uh, you know, how many people want to hear an mm, or a woo, 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 uh, over and over again, you know, wherever they put it. So it's something to seriously consider, you know, uh, it could be pretty annoying if you get the wrong one and you're essentially putting an airplane prop up there. So anyway, uh, that's kind of the last reason why I held off on the, uh, the wind turbine right now, just to consider all these things. And again, we ran out of money and had to put the money that we did have into everything else to uh, get it going. So, hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. That's it for this one. Uh, we'll go over some more of the challenges and stuff of, of wind in the future. Uh, but just wanted to give you kind of an intro of where we're at right now. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And don't forget that you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Patreon. In the meantime, everyone, this is The Real Martian. Out.